Welcome to Learn the Sky, your online resource for learning about the stars and constellations. Welcome, my name is Janine, and in this video, we're going to review the star cluster known as the Pleiades, sometimes called the Seven Sisters stars. And I love this group of stars because it's so easy to point out in the sky. And if you happen to have magnification, such as a pair of binoculars or a telescope, it's really gorgeous to view. Scientists today call this Messier 45, but it really has a ton of different names depending upon the culture that you're looking at. And it was really, really helpful to predict different weather patterns and seasonal patterns over the course of time for many different cultures. It's located in the constellation known as Taurus the Bull. And if you want to learn more about how to find Taurus in the sky, be sure to go see that detailed video. And this right here is a picture of Taurus and the thing that probably stands out to you is the Pleiades star cluster. In fact many people call this the Little Dipper because it does resemble the pattern of the asterisms known as the Big Dipper and sometimes they just call it the Little Dipper because it's like a tiny miniaturized version of the Dippers because it does have that shape to it. But really, this is its own group of stars that were all born together and they are traveling together through space as well. So in this video, we're going to explore how to find it, make sure that you can recognize it in different photos. So when you do go outside to observe it in the sky, you can recognize it. And then we're going to take a closer look at the brighter stars that are in this star cluster and we're going to look at the nine brightest stars but keep in mind that there's really over a thousand stars in this star cluster so let's get started the pleiades star cluster is a very famous one and it has been viewed by humans for thousands of years and the earliest records we see of it date back to 17,500 years ago. There's records of this in the Lascaux Caves in France and it's also located next to another star cluster known as the Hyades star cluster which makes up the face of Taurus. Aldebaran, the brightest star in Taurus, is not a part of Hyades but this is a star cluster that's about 150 light years away from Earth, so it's very well studied. And there are so many legends and names of this star cluster. Ancient Mesopotamians, Egyptians, Chinese, Greek, Roman, Polynesians, and so many more cultures have identified this tiny little group of stars. And it has lots of names, the Seven Sisters, the Japanese call it Subaru, uh, Makali'i for the Hawaiians, Matariki for New Zealanders, and so on and so forth. So there are so many names. And one of the really interesting things I just recently learned is that it's part of an asterism called the Golden Gate of the Ecliptic, which is both the Hyades and the Pleiades. And the reason this is called the Golden Gate is because the planets, moon, and sun pass through this particular area of the sky because Taurus is a zodiacal constellation. That means that the sun, moon, and planets all pass through it. So if we take a look at this star map, you can see the ecliptic line right here, and this is where the Pleiades are. And if we were to zoom in here a little bit, you can see that it's also called M45 and it's located next to the Hyades. So if we were to point out what this actually looks like, I love this picture and I tilted it so it mirrors what it looks like in the sky. So here are the Pleiades and then here is where the Hyades are. So if we zoom up a little bit right here, this is the asterism known as the Golden Gate of the Ecliptic. And I eventually will have a video on this topic because it's just so interesting to me and it's also a fairly recent uh, discovery of mine, so I'll take me time so to research it. But here I, sh I found this picture which shows you both the Pleiades and the Hyades right here. And you can see the moon, you can see Jupiter and Venus right here. And you can see that in this direction is where they are. They're not quite in the Golden Gate of the ecliptic, but they're nearby. And I thought this photo really just demonstrates 
that why it is called the Golden Gate of the Ecliptic, since these objects pass through. The Pleiades is classified as an open star cluster, and it's estimated to be about 440 four light years away. There are two different types of star clusters, open star clusters and globular clusters. And if you want to learn more about that topic, be sure to go see that video. So we're going to go through these pictures really quickly. And I just want you to spot the Pleiades, because if you can find them, then you can start to find the other constellations that surround it. So here we have a picture. Can you find the Pleiades? It's not the brightest thing in this photo, but it definitely stands out. Here's where the Pleiades are. This is the moon traveling through it. And then here, I actually, I would probably say this is a planet. If this were a moon, I think it would be really difficult to capture all of these bright stars, even though it's a long exposure photograph. And then right here is Orion. You can use the belt stars of Orion to guide you towards Taurus. Here's another photo. As you look at the night sky, are you able to find Taurus? Are you able to find the Pleiades? I can see it right here. You can use Orion, the belt stars, to aim you towards Taurus. And then there's that little group. And you can kind of see how it does look like a little dipper. Here's another gorgeous photo I have of the Pleiades with a comet going through, and it has been observed from the International Space Station as well. So are you able to see the Pleiades right here? I just think this is such a gorgeous shot, and in fact, I have another one of them as well. So as you're looking at the night portion of the sky, hopefully you're starting to recognize it. In the next portion of this video, we're going to look at the brighter stars of this star cluster. But keep in mind that scientists have identified over a thousand stars that are in this group, this star cluster group. But we're only going to really look at the brighter ones. How gorgeous is this photo, by the way? I just love it. So let's go ahead and get started looking at the stars going from brightest to dimmest in terms of the ones that we can visually see in the sky. So first we have Alcyone, that's the brightest. The second brightest is Atlas. Then there's Electra. And in fact, um, in mythology terms, uh, Atlas was the father of the seven sisters. And then we have Electra, then Maya, Merope, Tegeta, Pleione, and that was the mother of the seven sisters. Um, Selino is the next one and Steropi. So those are the stars that we are going to talk about. It's not the seven sisters. There's actually nine because it's the whole family here. But these are the brighter stars in this group. So let's dive in a little bit deeper and learn about these in greater detail. So Alcyone is a B-class blue star. In fact, all of these stars are B-class blue stars, and they all formed together. It's estimated that they're 100 million years old. And this this one is a multi-star system. I say multi-star because I couldn't nail down how many stars are actually a part of this group. Um, I found some of the literature a little confusing on that. But it's estimated to be 440 light years away, but plus or minus 50 or so light years. In fact, all of these distances have plus or minus quite a few light years. So you're going to see a range, um, and the distances are also different depending upon the sources that you consult. At least that's what I found during my research. Our next brightest star is Atlas, again, a B class blue star, and it's proposed to be a binary star system, but I couldn't confirm that. Perhaps with further study, it will be confirmed in the future. And in the mythology stories, Atlas was the daughter of the Seven Sisters. Next, we have Electra. This is the third brightest star in this star cluster and also a B-class blue star. And what this what that even means is that these stars are much bigger than the sun and they're much hotter. So they burn blue, a different color. And this star is known for its fast rotation. So when stars spin and have a really, really fast rotation, what we observe is that they're flattened at the poles and then stretched at the equator. So this one has a star rotation of about 
one and three quarter days. So that is really, really fast. Our own sun rotates about between 25 to 35 days, and the rotation is different at the equator than it is at the poles because it's made of gas, it's not solid, so it rotates unevenly. Our next star, the fourth brightest star, is known as Maya, and this is a, another B-class blue star, and it's called a chemically peculiar star in the literature, and what that even means is that there's an unusual abundance of certain types of metals. So in this case, Maya tends to be helium weak, but it's very high in manganese, and it's known for its reflection nebula that surrounds it, which is called the Maya Nebula. And if we zoom in here, that's what the Maya Nebula looks like. It's very, very beautiful. The light is reflected off these gases that are here. Moving forward, we have Merope. This is a B-class blue star. I first heard of this name Merope in when I was reading Harry Potter and I noticed with Harry Potter that many of some of the names that she chooses are chosen after um, names of stars or constellations in the sky. But this one is interesting because it's surrounded by the Merope Nebula, which we are going to zoom in here. Right there is where it looks like, and it's really, really gorgeous. And the Hubble telescope has really zoomed in on this particular area and has shown us some gorgeous features um, in this particular nebula. Our next star is called Tegeta, and again, B class blue star, larger and hotter, and a different color than our own sun. And this is estimated to be a double star system. Next, we have Pleione. I hope I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> I get nervous with star, star name pronunciations, but this one is a binary star. And in Greek mythology, this was the, um, this was the mother of the seven sisters. And this also has a really fast rotation at 11.8 hours. So since it is rotating so fast, that means it's flattened at the poles and then it would bulge at the equator. Next, we have Selino. This is also a B-class blue star. Are you repeating that with me as I say it at this point? Uh, this one is very large as well, estimated to be four times, it has four times the radius of the sun. And then our final bright member of this star group is Sterope. It used to be called Asterope, but is more called Sterope. I'm not sure why the name shifted, but this is estimated to be a double star system as well. I couldn't confirm if it's a binary star system or if it's an optical double, but all these stars right here are grouped together and I don't know why I went there. <laughs> they are grouped together and they are traveling together. So one other thing I wanted to go over before I wrap up this video is something called averted vision. Averted vision is a technique that you can use when you're stargazing and the Pleiades star cluster is a perfect perfect object to practice this technique with. And what averted vision is, is when you look at very faint objects using your peripheral vision. And the way this works is that when, when, when objects enter into our eyes, so light and color when they come through, um, what happens is that in this portion of our eye, we have color detecting cells. This is known as cone cells. But on the side of our eye, in this portion and right here, we have rod cells, and these are light detecting cells. So what you want to do when you're looking at the Pleiades, try looking to the side of the Pleiades instead of directly at it. And when you do that, when you look to the side of it here or here, here and not directly at it, you'll find that it's it becomes sharper when you're looking at it. So this this is a technique that uh, astronomers use when stargazing. And you don't have to do this just with the Pleiades. You can do this with any objects. Try looking to the side of them and you'll find that they'll come in sharper relief. 
we've come to the end of the video about the Pleiades star cluster. I hope you've enjoyed learning more details about this particular group of stars. This probably won't be the only video I do about the Pleiades because it would be really difficult to cover everything about this star cluster, particularly the mythologies, because there's just so many of them. But I really had some fun researching about all these bright stars and what some of their characteristics are. So I encourage you to keep going outside, get some practice with finding the Pleiades. It really is one of the easiest things to find in the sky. I often say use Orion to help you find Taurus. You can use the belt stars to aim you towards Taurus. But really, the Pleiades, Taurus is easy enough to find just because of the Pleiades. And you can use this star cluster to find other groups of stars in the sky. And it just gives you a sense of orientation of where everything else is. So I wish you clear skies as you go outside. Remember, it just takes time patience and practice to stargaze and learn the star patterns. So I wish you luck and keep looking up. If you're new to this channel, be sure to click the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications about all new videos. If you'd like to learn about the sky in greater detail, be sure to visit my website. I've got some freebies for you to download as well as online lessons and classes for you to experience. So be sure to check them out.